It's another victory for Right to Repair. Apple will now allow you to repair your own devices. That's right, folks. Announced on Wednesday, November 17th, 2021, Apple will start a program called Self-Service Repair. For eligible devices, starting with the iPhone 12 and iPhone 13, where individuals can purchase the official Apple tools, service manuals, and even parts. Yes, official OEM Apple parts directly from Apple to conduct their own repairs. And this is huge because as we all know, those of us who follow technology, we all know Apple has been totally against uh, third-party repairs. And uh, there's a lot of theories against that. And obviously with the uh, right to repair really in full swing, Apple has been deemed one of the biggest down players of right to repair. And uh, this is a huge shock to everybody. I mean, I know when I saw it on Wednesday morning, I was like, is this a joke? Because Apple does Apple does not allow such a thing. And now that they're actually going to allow third parties and even individuals to repair their own devices is just mind boggling. And uh, I still can't believe it. Now, for those of you who might not have followed this channel for a while, you know that uh, you, uh, you may not know that uh, probably about five or six years ago, I worked for an Apple authorized service provider. And uh, I can't tell you the number of customers who have stormed out of the store mad because we couldn't work on their phone because it had third-party parts. Uh, according to Apple's rules, can't work on it if it has third-party parts. Understand, this is a huge thing, and a lot of people have been putting a lot of pressure on Apple over the years, in particular, Lewis Rossman. If you haven't watched his channel, you need to check out his channel. Lewis Rossman is probably the smartest person on YouTube when it comes to tech repairs, and just, you know, he's been a big advocate for a right to repair, and uh, I think a lot of the pressure that he's put on Apple, and I think a lot of others have really forced Apple to really just you know accept that this is the way it is and this is the way it should have been all those years ago now in my humble opinion I still believe right to repair is two decades too late I think that these laws should have been in place around the turn of the century when you could still repair computers when you know all these small little you know PC repair shops popped up but unfortunately obviously such as it is we waited until now to do something and uh, that's just the way it is but uh, either way I am for right to repair understand because you know I still work on computers in my spare time I work on computers for friends and family and uh, so you know not having access to Apple parts has been a huge problem and newer Macs that are equipped with the T2 security chip is some people call evil because with the T2 equipped Macs you really can't do any repair unless you have access to the Apple service diagnostics tool which is only provided to Apple stores and Apple authorized service providers. The machine won't even boot unless it's run through AST. And uh, that was a huge bone of contention with a lot of people. I just had somebody message me just today at the date of making this video asking me if I could repair their MacBook and they have one of the T2 equipped MacBooks and I'm like sorry I can't because of that gosh darn security chip. Another part of this program that I haven't mentioned is Apple is ultimately going to open this program up to Max. Yes! Max. Now, not the older Macs, but we're talking the new Apple Silicon M1 based Macs. That would be almost every product in their product line right now, minus the upper end iMac and the Mac Pro. Apple will provide the official tools that you need, the official service manuals, and even the OEM parts. The parts part is the part that I can't get over. Too many parts there. But that's the part of this whole thing that I cannot get over is Apple will allow you to buy direct OEM parts directly from them. The way that I understand it is the way that this is going to work is it's going to work in a similar fashion to GSX. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is uh, the Apple's global exchange service. And that is a online based tool, which is only available to Apple authorized service providers where you can buy parts uh, directly from Apple. You will buy the part at cost and then you fix whatever the problem is with that product and then you send the uh, broken 
part back to Apple and then they give you credit for uh, the new part. So unfortunately you can't keep the broken part. Say for example you have a MacBook Pro that has a bad keyboard. Well I'm not sure on the new models but I know on the Retina models and the previous models the uh, keyboard was screwed into the top case with 50, 5, 0, little teeny tiny screws. So if you had the patience to deal with that, you could keep the top case and just, you know, buy a new keyboard. Well, with the GSX service, you can't do that. Uh, in order to get the discount, say for example, you know, you want a whole new keyboard, you have to order a whole new top case directly from Apple. The keyboard doesn't come as one assembly. Uh, the whole thing comes as a new top case. So you have to send the old top case back to Apple and then they give you the credit for the price. Now, ultimately, we don't know what the prices on the parts are going to be. My guess is expensive. It's probably going to be a pretty hefty cost to get parts directly from Apple, but also at the same time, if you send in the defective part, uh, you will get credit back for the new part. So it kind of eases the burden a little bit, but it does make it a little bit difficult in the fact that, oh, okay, well, the keyboard is broken, but the rest of the top case is good, so I can use it for another machine. Well, you can't. It's better than nothing, folks. I mean, that's the best thing I can tell you is it's better than nothing. I think it's a huge step forward for Apple themselves, and uh, it's a huge step forward for uh, right to repair. Like I said, this is something that should have been done two decades ago, but uh, it's finally, but something's finally being done about it, and we're finally going to be able to repair our devices uh, at home. Now, Apple still recommends you have an understanding of how to repair. Uh, you know, computers and phones. They just don't want people going out and doing it on a limb, which I understand. But ultimately, this is going to open up a whole different world than what we have been used to for the past 20 or 30 years. Now, there's two reasons why Apple has kind of avoided this up until now. One of them, obviously, is money, 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 money. Uh, you know, obviously, Apple can charge you $700 to go to the Apple store and have your Mac repaired there or your iPhone repaired there versus just having somebody do it at a kiosk in a mall or a local repair shop. You know, it takes money away from them. But I'm going to play devil's advocate just for one second in the fact that Apple had blocked it for so many years, mainly because they said of security reasons, which in a way I understand. Now, before you start throwing the hate mail in the comments and you start hitting the dislike button, let me explain for a second. I, in a way, understand where Apple is coming from from that. Um, they only wanted certified technicians working on their products because Apple has a reputation and they try to maintain the highest level of quality for the customer. Some people argue that with the newest releases of Mac OS and iOS, some of them bug ridden and whatnot, not always working right uh, and whatnot. But, you know, Apple was always true to the point that it wanted the best uh, user experience. And by going out and having somebody who doesn't quite understand how to work on Apple products, work on a phone or a Mac, uh, could be troublesome. And so I get that aspect and I totally get that but uh, ultimately we're in this time frame now where nobody has enough money to do anything uh, nobody has enough money to go out and pay Apple hundreds and hundreds of dollars for some repair when if they know how to repair stuff they can do it themselves or these third-party independent repair shops can pop up and do it themselves and the one thing I think that's going to come out of this is we may actually see more third-party PC shops again. Uh, for those of you who were born around the turn of the century, I'm sorry, uh, because you really didn't get to experience the third-party computer stores that would pop up, build anything you wanted, or repaired anything you wanted. Those shops are all but gone now. So this is a huge win for everybody. Understand, is it perfect? No. I mean, like I said, the GSX thing, you know, kind of working it like GSX, you buy the part at cost and then you send the defective one back for a rebate. That could be a hassle and I get some people are not going to be happy at that. But again, it's better than nothing. And it's better than what we've had over the past 25, 30 years, which is just a big F you. We don't want you repairing your stuff. This is going to start in early 2022, starting with the iPhone 12 and 13, and then they're ultimately going to open up this program to the M1 based Max. So if you have any of the new uh, M1 Apple Silicon based Macs, you will be able to get the actual tools 
ASAAPs use and the official service manuals and even parts. Yes, genuine parts. That's the thing, like I said, I still can't get over. Well, the tools, the service manuals, I get all that, but to supply the actual OEM parts that we'll be able to go and buy is amazing. Now, like I said, they're probably gonna be expensive, but at least we have a way to do official Apple repairs now without having to be Apple certified and having to work at an Apple authorized service provider or take your machine in and blah, 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 blah. This is going to be huge and I can't wait to see where this goes in the future. So what do you think about Apple's new self-service repair? Do you think this is a step in the right direction? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Well, drop your comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from the techies world, hit that little uh, subscribe button down below and hit the bell to turn on notifications so you will be first alerted to when I upload new videos. Make sure you follow all of those social media accounts and I will see you with the next tech video. Thank you for watching.